everybody, my name is Emma and this is Emma Raisin Books. Today's video is part of my series on how to publish your own children's book. There will be a playlist on my channel that this video is part of, all about everything you need to know to publish your own children's book. As this video comes out, that playlist will not be completed because not all of the videos are out. But once, in a bit of time, <laughs> there will be a playlist with all the videos there. Um, so, today's video is looking at how to illustrate or get your book illustrated. Now some of these videos will be useful to people who are looking at traditionally publishing a children's book but in general as somebody who's traditionally published when you approach your publisher they have their own illustrators that they work with. If you look at publishers websites you will generally see that they don't want your illustrations it will specifically say that they don't want it. So when you approach your agent or an agent um, or a publisher, then you're just looking at providing the text and they'll sort out the other things. So it's a totally different ballgame. And of course you might produce illustrations, but there's never any promise that those illustrations will get used. Um, so as I say, that's a different ball game. So in this instance, I'm predominantly talking about indies. Now, when you're producing an adult's book, obviously your focus is the text and then ensuring the text is formatted well and the size of the book and the cover design and stuff like that. Whereas with a children's book, the illustrations are a huge focus, they're so important because whereas with an adult's book, maybe you look at the cover, maybe you look at the blurb, and those are the things that attract you to the book. With a children's book, the illustrations are key. And even to the point where I find that there are certain books that I'm drawn to, and I think the illustrations are beautiful, and then my children hate it. So <laughs> people are definitely drawn to illustrations, and it's so important to make sure that the illustrations are good and how you want them. It's a really key part of the book. In some ways the words I think maybe aren't as important as the illustrations because the visual side of things is so important to the children especially if it's if they're reading it before they can read. They're looking at the pictures so the illustration is really important. Now I'm really well placed I think to talk about how to illustrate your book because I've tried all the ways there are <laughs> to get my book illustrated so I can talk from personal experience from the different ways that I tried to get the illustrations completed for Lily the Limpet Gets Lost. So I'm going to go through them in the order that I approached them and give all the information that I found as well as my personal experiences and then obviously you can go forth and find information <laughs> and do things how you want to do them because there are pros and cons to every, every different way of approaching it. So the first way I looked at doing it was by working with somebody I knew. The pros of this are that it's somebody you already have a relationship with um, and somebody whose artwork you already know, but predominantly it's the fact that hopefully the person will be willing to do it for a royalty share. Now one of the issues as an indie is that you don't want to pay too much money for the book up front because you have no idea how this book is going to do and you really don't want to make a loss. <laughs> Uh, it's it's always difficult to know how many copies you're going to sell and if you've spent a lot of money on illustrations it's just it's 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 difficult to invest that much in a book without knowing how much it's going to sell or having like other books where you can go well if that one doesn't do so well then I've got this other nah, ugh, difficult so by doing a royalty share with somebody it kind of protects you as the indie writer slash publisher in that you you aren't investing up front but that if the book does really well then that's great for both of you um, then on the other hand if you were paying an illustrator a one-off fee to produce the book if the book does really well that would have been the cheaper option so it is definitely something worth bearing in mind but if you can't f put the money up front and if a friend or a relative is willing on working on the project with you on a royalty share basis that can be a really good way of doing things Something to consider is that it could affect your relationship. Obviously, changing things from a like personal personal relationship to a professional relationship has its difficulties. Uh, it depends on the person. It depends how you feel as to whether that's going to work for you. For me, I found that when I was seeing the people I was talking to about the potential of this project, I found myself a bit sort of so. How are the illustrations? Because <laughs> it's like the elephant in the room that you might be meeting on a social basis but 
you want to know how the book is going because that's like a big part of your life as a person who's written it and really wants it to be out in the world and then your friend might not be so passionate about it because it wasn't their idea there's it, it can make things really awkward um and yeah definitely worth considering now for me personally i asked a couple of people i knew who i really loved the artwork that they produced whether they'd be interested they actually drew out some sketches and both, I asked two people and both of them tried it out and kind of said I don't think I can do this because the other thing to bear in mind of course is that this is a huge project to ask somebody to take on for you it's a thing that you desperately care about for them it's like something that they might think is fun but it's your thing and I'm going to be frank writing the words to a children's book doesn't necessarily take as long as doing the illustrations depending on the way that it's written um, and how much time you spend obviously looking into ensuring the words are age appropriate and if you've written it in verse versus if you've written it in prose and how many words long it is and all of that stuff it may well be that the illustration takes a lot longer so you are asking a huge investment from somebody potentially for very little return so worth thinking about and bear in mind how much you pay for a professional illustrator because then you can see what you're asking somebody to do for free. So for some people it may work out. I say at that stage it, it wasn't, I couldn't pursue it any further. I got to the point where I was like this has been going on long enough, I need to look at addressing this in a different way. So at that point I thought okay I'm going to look into professional illustration. So that is your, your second um, option is hiring a professional illustrator. Now again this has its pros and its cons so um, first of all the the cons are obviously that it's expensive. I got a few quotes they ranged very much uh, I think probably about the cheapest was about £800 and the most expensive that I got a quote for was £2,500 I mean those are huge amounts of money to invest realistically it depends how you feel about it because you do need to invest in a book of course it depends how much money you have to invest in the book it depends how you feel about those illustrators you're going to pay and whether if you found the illustrator that you love and you're willing to pay for it then do it um, but it's definitely something that you need to consider um, with the expense of the book now the pros of course is that you're going to get something hopefully very professional from somebody who is experienced in illustrating books so you're going to get a professional service a quick turnaround potentially compared to somebody who might just be doing it when they can around their own job you know somebody who's who that's their job is illustrating books they're just going to do it uh, it, it depends how you feel so I looked into various different options of it and the ways that you go about looking for an illustrator are, first of all you can search for people on the internet now I found a couple who were actively illustrating for indies those kind of people you can contact really easily to get a quote sometimes you need to send them an email or fill in a form and explain what the project is how many images you want um, and see what they say and I found some that I thought were really good. There's others where you like pick a style and then they produce it. It also depends very much on what you actually want. Personally, I wanted something hand drawn. I didn't want something digital. If you're looking for digital illustration, it's a lot easier. Uh, it's a lot cheaper. Um, but yeah, you know, you find, find the illustrators and you ask them for a quote. And if the price is right and the person is right, then, then uh, go for it. Now, now one issue that I ran into is that some illustrators, many illustrators, are represented by agents. And so I would find the illustrator's website and think, oh I love that artwork, I wonder how much they charge, this is really the kind of vibe that I want for the book, this, this might be a real goer. And then you see that you've got to contact their agent. And I don't know, but for me, if they're not kind of actively saying that they're working with indies, if you've got to go through an agent, I feel like they're not going to necessarily be that responsive to an indie approaching them, they're going to be wanting to work with publishing companies, I felt. I don't know if that's my prejudice, but there were a number of illustrators where, as I say, if you're not contacting them directly, then you've got to go through an agent, I don't know, it just complicates the matter anyway. So again, something to bear in mind. 
The other approach you can take in terms of finding somebody else to illustrate it and paying for the service is to go through something like Fiverr. Now I investigated this, I saved a few illustrators that I like the look of, um, but I had reservations about it personally. I know that Fiverr is an amazing thing, you can find illustrators on there that have got loads of reviews from really happy people. Um, and But my concerns personally were a few. One was that if the person doesn't live in the UK, what if their laws are different in terms of what the images can and can't be used for and I don't want to see my images being used in a, in a way that I don't want or, or I don't want to find that they don't produce images of a standard that I was hoping for and then I've got no recourse to do anything about that and that I might have lost my money, although Fiverr protects that to an extent. I was very worried about all that kind of thing, rightly or wrongly. Again, it may just be that my opinion is totally wrong here, and I know that lots of people do pursue things that way, So, but for me, I kind of got a bit scared off. Um, and I also found that in general, when you're looking at what the charging structure is, because you're basically given charges for particular services, that it would be saying, okay, so if you want 12 pages that have got one character and a background, it's this much. Well, what if some of the pages have got two characters? What if some I want backgrounds on and some I don't? And I it just, I got very confused. <laughs> and I know that you can message them and you can sort out arrangements, but uh, um, obviously Fiverr is there as part of the gig culture. It's, it, yeah, I, this isn't me saying you shouldn't do it. It was just saying that for me, I got a bit scared <laughs> and I decided not to do it. Definitely not me saying don't pursue it because it was very interesting and you know what, if I was an illustrator I would have my work on Fiverr so um, yeah. But personally I didn't find anybody that I thought I love that, I have to have that person. Uh, it, you know, it didn't work for me. Another way that you can, can go about it is that there are Facebook groups for indie illustrators you might be able to ask around and see if somebody's willing to do it and set up an arrangement with them. Again, it's somebody you don't know, it's very much a not a protected agreement. You would want to make sure that you really make sure that you're protecting that work and your future like professional relationship with that person. But that is another way of doing it, of finding out people's details, uh, you, you know, of asking around saying who, who does illustrations in this form and would, like, would work on this kind of project and then getting them to forward you their pricing and portfolios and then you can choose somebody. So there are ways of finding people. Um, so personally I looked into it and um, I've got expensive taste. <laughs> so the ones that I liked were really expensive and yeah, it just meant I couldn't afford the art that I wanted and the ones that were within my price range sometimes I just I just didn't like. So, um, and a lot of ones that were in my price range were digital and it wasn't what I was looking for. I know some people really like digital art so it's, you know, again, no, no, um, like no prejudice about that, it just wasn't what I was looking for. So, your third option is do it yourself. I started pursuing this. I thought, you know what, I can draw, so I'm going to do it myself. Loads of people do illustrate their own books, and part of why I was encouraged to do this is that people like Roger Hargreaves with the Mr. Men books, those aren't complicated drawings, but how successful are they? You know, I feel like, I mean, Mr. Strong is a square, just, you know, I know it's not as easy as that, but I kind of thought, well, I can put something together and I can make it kind of charming and stylized and. I did an art GCSE and I've won prizes for my art at local country fairs. <laughs> I, you know, I can draw something and people can go, oh, that, say, whatever. So I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. So I did some sketches. I spent a long time kind of sketching out characters and trying things out and reading about how to illustrate. I wanted something that was watercolours, so I have worked with watercolours before, but I started to get out my watercolours and try things out. It was really good fun, I've got to say that, I really enjoyed it. And there's definitely a place for it. I know loads of people who illustrate their own books and if you have the skills, then go for it. Um, particularly with the things that you can do digitally now, it's amazing. Um, but as I say, that wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted to do something hand-drawn, I tried. It wasn't all that great. In fact, I'm gonna try and put up here a picture that I drew, now I actually destroyed the original by accident by, because limpets can't move on sand so I tried to make the sand into rock and I destroyed it by painting over the top of it and everything ran and it was terrible. So this is the version I drew that has sand but this is a picture of it rather than a scan 
And then here is the image that my illustrator Evgenia produced for the same picture. And you'll see, like, there's a slight difference. <laughs> now, if you illustrate it yourself, the benefits are you can do what you like. <laughs> you can have whatever creative vision you want. You can experiment as much as you like, take as long as you want, you know, you have complete control over how that work is completed, when it's completed, you get to keep all of the royalties, it's your work, all of the, it's all yours. The cons are it might be rubbish, <laughs> so again, if you don't have the skills, don't just try and shove a book through because, you know, it'll be alright. Like I said, the illustrations are key to selling the book, make sure they're good. Yes, you might have to invest some money, in order to do that, but if you genuinely don't have the skills to produce the illustrations of the book to a standard that might sell, don't do it because you could ruin your book. Um, so I tried and I was all for it actually. I was kind of into it and really enjoying it and sending pictures to friends going, what do you think of this? And they'll go, oh, that's cute. Probably while secretly going, oh my God, what is this? Anyway, so I tried. And that was what I was going to do. I was like, I'm going to spend a couple of months doing this. I'm going to illustrate it. Like Roger Hargreaves or Beatrix Potter or whoever. Anyway, what then happened was that I was having a drink with my brother and my mum. And I was talking about what was going on with my job, which is writing. And that I was having fun trying out illustrating. And I was showing them, oh, look, this, this picture like, on my phone. Look at this. This is this illustration. And that's that illustration. And my brother turned around to me and said, well, you know that Jenny, we call her Jenny uh, because uh, her, her, so she's, uh, Evgenia is Russian and her, uh, the Russian shortening of Evgenia is Jenya. And so the anglicized version of that is Jenny. So if I refer to her as Jenny, that's because that's what our family call her. Um, and he was like, well, Jenny has an art degree. And I was like, oh, I know, but I've already, like, bothered people to ask them whether they would work with me. And, you know, it's difficult and it takes a long time for them to sketch it out. And I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And, like, don't worry about it. Don't bother her with it. It's fine. I'm having fun. It's no problem. And he was like, no, seriously, I think she'd really enjoy it. And he sent me a few pictures of art that she'd done. And I was like, okay, she's really good. And he was like, she's got, like, loads of expertise in creating illustrations. She's really amazing. And, I mean, I can't deny that she is really amazing. Anyway, the next thing, I get a message from him when he'd gone home saying, yeah, I've asked Jenny and she's going to do it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, um, I then had lots of conversations with, with Jenny where I uh, we sorted everything out between us, how we were going to do it. I sent her notes about what I wanted and she kind of said, yeah, I can do that. And the relationship was, was set up. So... Those, uh, as I said, I ended up going with the first option of working with somebody that I know. But those are the different things that you can do. And research them all and see what you fancy and weigh up the pros and cons, because there are pros and cons for all of them. Different things are going to suit you depending on what the project is, what your skill set is, what your budget is, um, to find something that will make your book look amazing. But before I finish this video, I just want to quickly finish up by talking about how you work with an, il an illustrator. So if you're not doing it yourself, what how you actually work with another person. Now this is from my experience of working with Evgenia. It may be different working with a with a like a hired professional illustrator, not to say she's not professional because she's amazing, but um, you know, I, I don't have that experience. But essentially what you're gonna need to do is send them the text so that they can read it all and then write I, what I did was write notes on what I envisioned for each image. Um, which then she could turn around and say, oh, what do you think about this? Now, one of the things was that is that my book features sea creatures, which she had never heard of. She didn't know what a limpet looked like. She didn't know what fish you would typically get in a British rock pool, you know. So I sent her loads and loads of images of this is what a limpet looks like. This is the kind of thing that you would find in these kind of waters. So that, because I didn't want somebody to be reading the book and say, well, that's not, I mean, obviously it's not like, like factually completely correct but I wanted it to be close enough and for people to to see that it was creatures and scenes that were it could be as, as close to the truth as possible you know so it was scientific but obviously still a children's book so um 
yeah, equally, whatever your book is about, you need to be kind of sending your expectations. This is what I want to see. Um, this is how I envision it. This is all the information that you need. What are the characters like? So for me, it was like, how old is Granny? How old is Billy? Um, what you know all, the, all of the stuff send them all the information and then for us it was very important to have a dialogue so she would send me sketches what do you think oh could you just change this um it was amazing what jenny could change because there were even some additions right at the last minute which she was able to do um but being able to talk to each other and say oh actually no could you change that to whatever or her coming to me and say i've done this sketch of this character what do you think um, so that's kind of what to expect is is a, a relationship, a conversation between you to ensure that what you end up with is something that you're really, really happy with. I really hope that you found this video helpful in trying to find an, an illustrator for your work. Please do make sure that you fill the comments with information and support for each other. If you've got anything to add to what I've said, please do add it to the comments and help each other out. And uh, I hope that you check out my other videos about publishing your own children's book. And of course, the links to Lily the Limpet are below if you are interested. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of content about writing. I do also talk about the books that I've been reading as well, lots of bookish content. So please do subscribe if you'd like more of that and I'll see you all soon for another video. Take care.